Hello everyone, welcome back to the Geek Blend, and welcome to one of the final videos during the 31 days of Halloween here on the channel. I hope you guys have enjoyed all the content for the month of October, because I really enjoyed making it, and I'm hoping to do it again next year. Today's video, we're actually going to be ranking the Halloween franchise from worst to best, and this is all my opinion. If you guys don't agree, or if you do agree, let me know in the comments below, or if you have your own ranking, I would love to hear from you guys, as usual. So let's get started. There are 11 movies in the franchise. So we're going to start with number 11 first and work our way up to number one. And number 11, of course, you probably can figure this one out. It is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I absolutely hate this movie. I'm not the only person in this fandom, like this Halloween fandom, that hates the movie. The majority of people do. There's only a few people I've seen who actually dig it or like it. One of the reasons I hate it so much is because of what he did with Michael Myers. The fact that we see his face. He actually talks in this movie. And in the intro, when he's actually in the hospital, like, uh, trying to get to Lori, and then she wakes up and it's a dream sequence, I was like, done. I am done with this movie already in my head. Like, I wanted to walk out of the theater. It was that bad. Uh, but I stayed, watched the rest of this fucking train wreck, and the only thing good about this is Brad Dorff's performance as Sheriff Brackett. The rest of it can go fuck itself. And that would bring us to the number 10 spot, and I will give it to Rob Zombie's Halloween from 2007. Now, a lot of people will put this higher on the list, but... I don't like Rob Zombie's Halloween movies at all. Uh, one of the reasons I hate this movie the most is because we get his white trash family in the beginning, like every fucking Rob Zombie movie does. It's <laughs> it's done so badly. Their dialogue in, in the beginning with the family, nobody fucking talks like that. Come on, Rob. You're just writing dialogue to be cringy. You know that's what you're doing. Don't write this kind of shit anymore. Make a normal fucking movie. A normal family. That's... That's the thing about um, John Carpenter's Halloween. That is one of my favorite parts about it. Is Michael's from a seemingly normal family. He's not from some fucked up family. He is just a kid who snaps. A regular kid who snaps. That's He took the mystery away about that by explaining Michael's backstory. Then we get this grown up Michael Myers who's like almost seven feet tall. That's another reason that it doesn't work. It takes away from the mystique of him being a normal person. He grows up to be a normal, average-sized guy, but he's just normal, but he snapped. He's simply, purely evil. He took away from that, and that's one of the reasons I hate this movie so much. Rob Zombie's Halloween, I'd rather piss on it than watch it again. That brings us to the number nine film on the list. It would be Halloween Resurrection, or just right above the Rob Zombie stuff. This one is really, really bad. And the Busta Rhymes uh, karate stuff in the shed at the end of the movie where he's like karate chopping and kicking Michael Myers through the wall and stuff is just so stupid. It does not fit in a Halloween film, and I don't know why they put this in here. I wonder if they put it in here just to give Busta Rhymes something to do. Another scene, in my opinion, that makes this movie the worst is, or one of the worst in the franchise, is when um, Busta Rhymes' character, Freddy, is in the house dressed as Michael Myers, and the real Michael Myers comes up behind him. Turns around, he gets scared, think he gets one of his producers or somebody else that's dressed as Michael Myers, and he yells at him to leave and to go away, and Michael Myers just leaves. He just goes away. It's like, if that would never happen, Michael would just stab him and kill him and get it over with. He'd be like, what are you telling me what to do? I'm just going to stab you. Probably stab him in the face, stab him in the chest, do whatever, but he would kill him right there because Michael doesn't listen to anybody. Shitty movie, don't recommend it at all. The only way I would watch this movie is if I'm actually watching it to make fun of it because there are some elements to it that you could do that with, uh, but other than that, it's definitely not worth watching. The next movie on the list is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. The biggest problem I have with this movie is the theatrical version is so out of place. Uh, then you get the producer's cut. There's a lot of problems with it as well. But in the theatrical cut, there are these music video cuts all through the movie that make it really unwatchable. I wish somebody... Well, I need to find it and see if somebody already did it. So my name is take a cut of the producer's cut and the best things about the theatrical cut. Especially this scene at the end of the theatrical cut in the hospital where Michael's killing a bunch of people. They make him really brutal and badass, and that's a really great scene. Unfortunately, it's tied to the theatrical version, and there's m more stuff in the producer's cut I like. So I wish somebody would take those elements and put them together. Because it might make something worthwhile, but what we've got in the two cuts by themselves are not worth watching, and they're just really not good. And it's got the worst storyline in the franchise with the whole thorn curse, and Michael, like, has sex with somebody? It's like that, no, 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 stop what you're doing, uh, you can take a step back, rethink your script idea, no, 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 let's not do that. Uh, really bad movie, don't recommend it. Paul Rudd's like the only redeeming thing about the film. Other than that, it's, it's bad, not worth watching. Next on the list is Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Another not a good film in the Halloween franchise. Unfortunately, with this franchise, there are more bad than there are good, but the good outshines the bad. 
This film, the mask, the characters, the story, it's all done really poorly. Uh, the mask looks so weird. In the beginning, when Michael's saved by that guy, and it cuts to a year later, I'm like, is Michael in a coma for a year? What the hell? It didn't make sense. It's just weird. Uh, the whole thing with um, Jamie Lloyd being mute now, can't speak, just really bad story plot there. I don't like that. They killed off Rachel in the beginning and they gave us Tina. Enough said. That will bring us to the next film on the list. It is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Now when I was younger, when I saw this, for years I hated this movie with a passion. As time has gone on and I've watched it again and again, I've grown to like it more as a standalone film and not part of the Halloween franchise. What they wanted to do originally, what Carpenter wanted to do, was he wanted to make an anthology series. He thought Michael Myers' story was done after the first one, and he wanted to take the Halloweens and basically make it, each film, a different story. And if they didn't do Halloween 2, this film would have been more successful and would have worked. I do enjoy the story. The effects are well done. The more I watch this, the more I like it, and it is a good movie. It just... After you get past the fact that it's labeled Halloween, you're there. I love the whole thing with Silver Shamrock and the masks and that whole plot. It's really good. Uh, performances of the movie are pretty good. Some of them are over the top, but it's a really well done movie. Uh, so I definitely recommend watching it. And that'll bring us to the next movie on the list, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. This is the first time we see Michael since Halloween 2. And we get him back. Unfortunately, the actor playing Michael Myers, they gave him a bad mask. They put shoulder pads on him. It looks weird. From some distant shots, he looks pretty good. Uh, I like the story. I think Rachel and Jamie's uh, chemistry in the movie re works really well. That's one of the reasons the movie works so well. That's why I hated part five when they killed off Rachel and brought in Tina. Because I thought uh, having Rachel with Jamie again would have worked really well. If they would have kept those characters together. But the story is good. There's a lot of great kills in it. The shotgun kill through the chest. One of my favorites in the franchise. It could have been done better. Uh, if the mask was better, uh, I think it would have been a better film. I think Donald Pleasance is, is really good in this movie. I like how they take Loomis' is crazy from part two and crank it to 11 in this one, and it works really well. It absolutely does. Donald Pleasance is always going to be the shining spot of this franchise. Even in the shitty films, he does a great job. Such a great actor. In the whole of the franchise, this one is one of the better entries. It's not great, but it is a good entry in the franchise. And that brings us to the next movie on the list, Halloween H2O, in my number four slot. Now... Going into this movie, I had so many high hopes and so many expectations because they brought back Jamie Lee Curtis. We're going to get Laurie Strode again. Uh, we get her. She's the head of a school out in California with her son. Uh, she changed her name to hide from Michael Myers. I love the intro to this film. I love the opening sequence. I love that Marion Chambers is back. I, I love how it connects with the uh, Halloween 2. It, it's a continuation of that. We skip all the Jamie Lloyd sequels that I wasn't a huge fan of those storylines, even though I did enjoy part four. I'm glad they moved away from those. Uh, the mask was a problem in this movie. They replaced it a couple times. There's a CGI mask replacement in there, uh, but I do enjoy it. The final confrontation between Laurie and Michael makes the movie worthwhile, in my opinion, uh, and definitely worth a watch, and one of the better entries in the franchise. And that'll bring us to the number three slot on the list, and that is Halloween 2018. I was very, very excited when they announced this was coming back. I was very uh, optimistic about the way they were going to go with it and the writers that were involved with it and the, the fact that they brought back John Carpenter. He was actually going to be involved. He was going to be doing the music. He had some input in the story. The fact that he was attached to it was one of the real reasons I was really excited about it. Going into the theater, I had high hopes. I was trying to curb them and bring them down so I can enjoy it and kind of look at it with objective eyes. And it really worked for me. I like the story. I like how they had Jamie Lee Curtis uh, living alone like that, basically, you know, away from society. She's still dealing with PTSD from the first film. That's probably what would happen. She's still not over the fact that Michael uh, is still alive and still in an institution. Uh, once he escapes, she goes after him. Uh, the whole story is really well done. The only thing I don't like about it is the whole uh, Dr. Sartain story, but everything else in the film works for me. I thought James Jude Courtney did a fantastic job as the shape. Brings back the original design for the mask, and I absolutely love that. That's one of the reasons this works so well. And it's just a great film, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well like I did. That brings us to the second slot on my list, and that goes to Halloween 2, the original Halloween 2 sequel. Now, when they announced Halloween 2018 and that they was going to be racing this sequel, I was kind of bummed, but I understand they wanted to tell their own story right after part one, and that makes sense with what they did. But I still love Halloween 2, and I always will. Continuation of part one, it picks up right after the end of part one. But we get Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode is in the hospital. Michael's trying to find her. This is the sequel that introduces the, the idea that Michael and... Uh, 
her are sister and brother. So that is where this comes into play. Dr. Loomis's performance is cranked up a little bit more from the first movie. Uh, Donald Pleasance kills it in this role. I love his uh, part in this movie. It's one of my favorite parts about it. The whole stalking slowly in the hospital works. The kills are great. A little more blood in these. I, I like seeing Michael's POV after he escapes from Loomis, after Loomis shot him. I shot him six times. I love that whole thing. But he, we see Michael's POV. He's going through houses. He's killing people here and there. He takes the knife. And he's making his way to the hospital to find uh, Laurie Strode. Everything works about this movie. I know a lot of people don't like it. And a lot of people prefer 2018. That's fine. But I love this one. I think it's a fantastic sequel to part one. And I think Rick Rosenthal did a fantastic job with directing. And I loved what Dick Warlock did with the shape in this one as well. That'll bring me to the number one slot on the list, and I'm sure you guys will not be surprised at all. It is John Carpenter's Halloween, the original classic from 1978. My favorite horror film of all time, and one of my favorite movies of all time. Always will be. This movie is so well done from beginning to end. Characters, story, everything works about this movie. Nothing doesn't work. Dialogue is well written. Every, you know, Michael is terrifying this the way he stalks Laurie and everybody else in the movie it works everything it just came together and worked everything works about it that's why it's so well done John Carpenter's direction the cinematography the lighting and the shadows what helps make the mask look even more terrifying because it's just a white mask the shadows and the light the way they play with that is what made the mask look the way it did and it just looks fantastic uh, the suspense, the music is perfect. John Carpenter's score is one of the best scores ever written for a film, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinions as well. Just a great, great piece of music. Fantastic work. Donald Pleasant's amazing performance in this movie. I love the speech he gives to Sheriff Brackett in the house when he's talking about how he met him, and then he realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. I love that. It's one of the best written uh, monologues for a character in all of film, in my opinion. I have so much to say about this movie, I really do, and I have a review coming out tomorrow for this one and for Halloween 2, so keep an eye out for that. But that will conclude my Halloween franchise ranking list. I went through them and gave you guys a little bit of the reasons why I put those in that order, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What did you guys think of my rankings? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Let me know in the comments below what you think, uh, what your rankings are, and what do you think of my rankings as well. Leave a like on the video, it really does help us out. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on everything we do here on the channel. Links in the description below for our Discord, all of our social media, and all the ways you can support the channel, including Patreon, Subscribestar, and to become a member of the channel as well. Anything you guys can do to help us out, we would really appreciate that. I want to say thank you to all of my current channel supporters, whether you're a patron, Subscribestar, or a channel member. I appreciate all you guys and everything you do for the channel. Thank you very much. And I hope you guys have enjoyed all the content during the 31 days of Halloween. And I really, really appreciate all the comments and the likes and the shares. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you all. Well, that will do it for this video of my Halloween franchise rankings. I'm Jeff. This is the Geek Blend. And remember, if you geek about it, we speak about it. We'll see you guys next time. Happy Halloween.